Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 152 of the Speared Sundays podcast, a very special International Women's Day. Welcome, everyone, with a cunt, to the hunt of International Women's Day edition of Speared Sundays. I hope you're enjoying your pussy. Because you should, because it's International Women's Day. Congratulations! You were born, and out of the 50% chance of having a vagina, you got that one. Amazing achievement! Well done! You really nailed that, and you should be celebrated. It must be so hard to be born... International Women's Day! Hey, uh, seriously though, I want to... Before I get started, this is a very special episode. I'm being joined by my uh, lovely girlfriend, Jazz. Uh, She's got some exciting news for you. And uh, I just wanted to say very quickly before she jumps on, thank you so much to everyone who has jumped on and started supporting me on Patreon since my video uh, about how I need your support. We've jumped up uh, at the time of recording. We're almost at 350 patrons. That's almost 150 extra people. That's fucking incredible. Uh, Keelan, the guy who's helping me edit and film, I've already organized. He's going to be working three days a week now instead of two. So that's another day that we can be in here working on shit. I want to get it up to five. We're not there yet. Um, but I mean, you can see in the past two months what we've done has been fucking incredible. My channel has grown faster than it ever has. I think I've gone up 30,000 subscribers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've hit the front page of Reddit twice, two months in a row. It's Everything is going nuts. I've just uploaded more stand-up and more stand-up is on the way. So if you want to see more shit and you want to get access to the Patreon-only Me and Mike podcast, another episode is dropping soon. You know where to do it. It's Patreon. Uh, just Google Lewis Spears Patreon, you'll find it. So without any further ado... Uh, It is the International Women's Day edition of the podcast, so welcome to the podcast, Jasmine. Yay! Woo! Hey. Oh, hang on, I've got to turn your microphone on. Sorry. Um, Sorry. All right, so we're back as the official man of the podcast. I will allow you to speak by turning your microphone on. Thank you, I appreciate it. Well done. Well, today really is about reinforcing gender norms yes why else would you have a day that celebrates gender exactly and as and we only all know one of the genders international out of the women's day international women's day the most important day of the world that where we celebrate women's achievements it is the most important day international I men's day, one day inherently sexist it's on the 17th of november actually men's day mm-hmm. yeah inherently sexist to celebrate men did you know that well i had at work today there was a a uh, little party that they put on with food cupcakes. So about 50 people gathered around. They and gee, you really needed that because it's so hard being born with different bits, isn't well, it? They or not even different, just standard. It is. Well, how would, how would you like it if you didn't have a penis? I mean, I get my own fucking day and cake. No one made me, to, <laughs> me a cake on International Men's Day. All I saw on Men's Day was just a million tweets about how men cake are evil. Or penis. Yeah. Cake. <laughs> That's what I mean. Um... Yeah, well, there was apparently some people complaining saying, when's the men's day? And they said... Oh, really? Were they at work? Yeah, That's yeah. funny. And was, uh, I heard the HR lady go, they just don't get what we're doing here. They just don't get it. What we're doing <laughs> is we're giving women something <laughs> nice and we're not doing it for men. They just don't get it. They don't get it. They don't understand. I think there should be a men's day, though. If you're having a women's day, have a men's day as well. It just like, makes sense. No, but every day is do men's know, day, don't you know? Do you, do you know remember what I did? World War Two? That was men's years. That was <laughs> really when we got the spotlight Again there. Again with the war argument. It's like every time gender equality comes up, you go, well, what about war, you know? Men suffer too. What yes, about war? what about you know, war? Those s- small periods of time. Small periods? Yeah, small periods of time where some of the population, not all, only the ones who are conscriptable, go off and they do stuff which fucks them up in the head. What about war? Uh, and that's meant to be like everything else is fine because of war. Okay, how about... Uh, it's okay. It's like women's oppression couldn't vote for centuries. Hey, when, when you're... allowed to own property. Oh, man, you can't own and maintain a property? Jeez, that sucks no, more than being know. shot in you the can brain. You maintain a property, but it's not going to be your property. Hey, when, uh, when your house goes on fire and you're stuck in there and you're trapped, who do you call? The fire women. Oh, 
Really? Yeah. The fire women? They don't come because really? there's none of them. No, and if they were there, no. they would be physically See, unable to do the it's job. It's like a, the classic <laughs> Bill Burr joke. Feminism goes out the window when there's an emergency. <laughs> What did you hear about? I'm a feminist. No, women first off Apparently the boat. Apparently, <laughs> they had a female uh, security guard at the White House. Someone uh, attacked to come in. The female security guard was completely unable to do anything. This psycho got into the White House. Yeah. Did you hear I heard about, about that? that, yeah. Mm. Which sometimes when I see like little female police officers, I'm like, <laughs> what, are, what are they going to do? Like a weapon is... Sure, whatever. But Australian police don't really draw guns like ever. It's normally comes down when it's like violence. I don't it's know. Like not much violence. happens in Australia though, so I feel like there's yeah. not a lot of threat on the job for police officers. For the most part, you're not actually coming up against violence. Unless the I point suppose is, you're it's on International like a- Women's Day, and there's nothing wrong with women, and they're all they're all perfect, and they suffer so much, especially in the first world as white women. I thought women. the point of International Women's Day is that women are superior to men. Well, yeah, clearly, obviously, on this day, they absolutely And would are. you say that you agree with this statement? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, dick between my legs. That is the right. Collar around my neck. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, do you know what I did for International Women's Day today? Uh, I don't know. Just was a woman. Yeah. And well, that's obviously. worth celebrating. Well done, baby. You did it. I'm wearing purple. It's the color of the day. I thought it was pink. No, it's purple. Oh, pink's too gender normative. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how they picked the colors, Lewis, but probably right. that sounds right. Okay. But anyway, it's purple. But I got a text today from one of my friends who's very um, right-minded. Do you know what I mean? Like right-wing? No, right, as in he holds the socially correct opinion. Oh, so he just does whatever other cunt does. Yeah, and he's very sensitive about these things. Oh, so, so Twitter. I got a chain <laughs> chain text today. It was obviously he sent to just every woman in his oh list. Oh my god, that's fucking pathetic. And it was a what an ally. <laughs> yeah, that's what he he's an ally. It's International Women's Day. <laughs> you know what? All of the women I half know really need from me, a stranger, a nice text to say, "Well done." Well, it, it must was, suck it being was a more woman. Than a text. So you get a day. It was more than a text. I actually got it was a nice uh, square photo. It had a bird yeah. with a little piece oh, and peace symbol. Well, he made a graphic. Well, I don't think he made it. I'm sure he just saw it on Facebook and was like, let me send it to all the bitches that in my phone. It's it's always that guy that, you know, just grabs a woman in a tunnel. Oh, uh, this guy, no, he wouldn't do that. That's really far. This is like an example of your cognitive distortions, Lewis. You, you say one thing and oh, then you just you go so far. Cognitive distortions. You've been reading one textbook. Wait, no, let me finish my story first. And then no, we'll that's not how this textbook. podcast is. You tell half a story and then we go on another tangent. No. And you never finish any but of them I and then we get to an hour and then you have to leave. The, I want to do the podcast a little bit different. Wait, there's oh, well, so many it is things. International so many Women's things Day, so that we have to get through. And you know, it's so your let me podcast. finish, let me finish really this here. story. I've got a dick. I was born with the wrong bits. Uh, I was born with oppressive pieces. For today. You know what? Actually, I heard International Women's Day was a day where you're allowed to murder a man and you won't suffer any consequences. And that, you know what? I completely agree with it. And that's the kind of conversation we should be having. Because, you know... You know, how can we best divide people based on their sex and gender? There are so many more women have been murdered by men over time. So on this one day, it's like Mm. the purge to all men. Here we go. I don't like the scissors. Fuck <laughs> off, cunt. I just got some scissors, held them to Lewis's neck. But it would be fine if I did this today. Tomorrow, no. No. But today. Can I have the scissors, please? No. I'm not going to murder you. It's Women's Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll keep That's the scissors over here. That's why I said please. Oh. <laughs> no, it's International so, Women's no, okay. Day. We're all this scissoring. Guy, this guy sent me a photo, a little graphic. I would like you to graphic. acknowledge my scissoring joke. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha. So this guy sent me this photographic. It said, happy International Women's Day. Yeah. And I thought, like, I'm not really close with this guy. Like, Fucking I, better not be. <laughs> look, I, I know him and we get on, but we don't see each other very often and I'm not very close with him. So, I, of course, I thought what better yeah. way to respond to this text message except to tell him thank you but i don't actually identify as female <laughs> you're such a bitch which is exactly what i sent back to. i said thank you i actually don't identify as female um but i appreciate How old's the guy 
He's got to be like 28. Oh, so he can't tell if you're serious. And he like he's really sad because he can't get he can't get a girlfriend. And I wonder why. <laughs> Could it be because he's texting fifty women the same image? Going, well, I, I submit. <laughs> Jeez, that's a fucking that's a that's a guy that you could think. You know what? Uh, that guy knows how to fix a well, broken how do you, tire. How do you think he responded? I think he just was like, whatever you say. Yes. Okay. Well, sorry. Pretty much, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. Um, uh, yeah, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't mean to offend you. I was like, no, no, I'm not offended. It happens all the time. <laughs> anyway, he asked me what I identify as. So I said I identify as a demi girl. What the fuck is that? Sounds like something from World of Warcraft. I know, isn't it cool? No. Yeah, it's like... So it uh, sounds like a mental illness. It's like... <laughs> It's like, <laughs> I've looked so it up because comments. I was like, okay, so what is, what is this whole, the gender spectrum, right? Mm. I'm very curious about things. So when I wanted to know about it, I just yeah. looked it up and this was the gender identity that I identified with the most. Which was? Demi girl. Which means? About two thirds female and one third male. Right. I haven't told you this, babe. We haven't talked about so, this before. Fuck, I'm one third. You're one dude. third gay. <laughs> 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 but there's there's a whole they're like they they literally. Does that mean I only need to be two thirds faithful? No. Because I don't date the rest of you. Because I'm only straight. No, I get to be one third unfaithful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is International Women's Day. But I don't, I don't seriously identify as this gender. I consider myself female. I was just like, look, if you're looking into it with an open mind, and you're saying, okay, maybe gender isn't what they mm. said it was assigned at birth. If it could be anything, what would it be? Well, I suppose in identifying, if you get to pick, if you get to pick. <laughs> but no, but the thing is though Then I would pick Demigirl The thing is, they're like, oh, we don't like gender norms And we don't go with gender roles and th- and that shit But like, if there is no gender roles and no gender norms How do you know that you're only one third boy and two thirds girl? Is that because you maybe display well, no, one I think, third I think the male movement, traits? I think the movement is very confused Yeah, it doesn't you have, yeah Either you're accepting of social norm Because the the whole thing is rallying against gender norms and saying that gender is fluid and gender can be anything. Mm. Well, then how can you also say that, like, we should be celebrating well, gen- women? Gender, and gender that- norms is, are like biologically irrefutable. Um, what do you and mean? And I, I think that I think I mean like generally, like for example, an infant when it's born, a male infant will pay more attention to things, and a and a female inf- infant will pay more attention to faces and expressions which give is emotions give me a study on that please google it there's literally heaps no give me an academic peer reviewed study there's, google it there's heaps have you been on my podcast before because that's not what we do well i'm sorry i think this is not where i want to be <laughs> well it is international women's day so you can do whatever the fuck you want well um, no i think so it's anyway that was my story with with my friend i ended up um, uh, before i get a million transphobic comments can i just <laughs> clarify because well, if you don't clarify no, I'm not you, arguing. Get, you get a whole bunch of fucking left-wing people going i can't believe you're such a fucking transphobic piece of shit and then you get a whole bunch of right-wing no, people going yeah but- lewis is right we <laughs> should fucking destroy anyone who wears a dress when they've got a dick i think that the whole the transgender thing is whatever if you think you were born. You should have been born a boy. Go for it. I'll use your pronouns. This is funny. I actually I, have a whole. I have a few things about transgender listed that mm. I want to talk about today. So it's funny that we stumbled upon it so soon. Well, I think it's. I think that what I do think about. I think the gender norms thing is just so normal and natural and not an oppressive thing. Because the minute you start saying that they're oppressive, that's when normal people go, "Oh fuck, what's wrong with I me?" I think. Uh, so we disagree on this a little bit. I think that there are some biological sex differences, but I think gender is entirely a construct and sociologically made. So I think there is no way that you can tell that there hasn't been... Have you ever seen a, a man? No. Next to a woman? No, I don't see you gender. That I don't see Have gender. you noticed that they're... <laughs> completely different <laughs> i said there are physiological sex differences obviously and yeah. there are some behavioral differences obviously just like with any other animal species mm. but i think gender is very much a construct and i know we disagree on this because you think gender is pretty much entirely biological 
Well, I think that, yeah, pretty much. I think that if we lived in a genderless society, there would be a lot more people identifying as like demi girls or androgynous. But that's my point. So all of those demi, I'm two thirds this and I'm one third that, and I'm a little bit this. That's just because you identify with biologically male traits and behaviors. Yeah. It's it's like you can't say that gender roles don't exist. No, but unless male, I'm transitioning. No, male, because male then and they female exist. are archetypes, right? Yeah. They're two spectrums, opposite ends of the spectrum of behavior. Oh yeah, I do think the it's aggressive yeah. behavior and yielding behavior. Yeah. You know, I creative superior behavior, <sighs> inferior. <laughs> Get fucked. Get is the shit that you say. Like, when I listen to this podcast, sometimes I am ashamed that we've been in a relationship for six and a half years. sometimes I listen to this podcast and I'm ashamed that I'm me because I go, dude, that's the dumbest shit you've ever said since last episode. Uh, Yeah, that sounds right. I always get comments, like, from people coming from Lure Review or Bi-Monthly Bull, which is quite well-researched and and I'm very careful with what I say. And then they come over to the podcast and they get angry at me because I'm not as smart as they thought thought that I was. They think I'm some kind of mega super genius who researches and fact checks, which I do over A there. But here, hey man, it's me by myself <laughs> yelling in a shed surrounded by brothels. Yeah. Welcome like to Speared Sundays. Yeah. There's lower your standards there. while I lower your IQ. There's a kebab shop over there that's really good. It's just brothels yeah. and kebabs. Mm. The bus depot. It's, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> it's this worst place ever. It's the weirdest ever. place. At least I there's told, a kebab remember, shop. Remember the Nazi we saw that left a bomb? Oh, yeah. That was from episode 150 if you guys yeah. haven't seen it yet. No, that um, that was that was great fun. I think you mistold it though. Um, no, I don't think you so. You said that I said we should drive away. Okay, that's true. That is true. <laughs> you were like, oh, let's go. And I said, are you kidding me? A Nazi left a bomb outside of business. We have to see what happens. Uh, yeah, but we did ha- actually, we had to leave because my car was unregistered and the police would have fined us if we stayed. Instead of chasing the Nazi. Do we had know, to leave so that they would chase the Nazi yeah. instead. Public service announcement. Police cars have an automatic scanner on all four corners of their vehicle that automatically does a 360 check of all the vehicles around them to see if they're registered or not. Or they also see if, you know, there are criminal criminal convictions on the person that it's registered to, you know, if mm. there's a warrant out for their arrest or anything like that. Public service announcement. It's International Women's Day and they are superior. Yes, I agree. Mm. Well, seeing as I'm so superior, ask me what I've been up to since I was last on the podcast. Do you have a exciting announcement to make? What have you been up to, Jasmine? I do have an exciting announcement, but oh. first I just want to talk about you know let's have it let's have a deep and meaningful let's have a chat. No, we tell them it now while. because there are so many fucking idiots who <laughs> listen to fifteen minutes and then fuck off. No, uh, tell them now for your own benefit. Okay, no, I wanted you to ask me what I've been up to and then I'll just tell a few things and then I'll tell them my exciting news. What have you been up to? Fine. You don't want to talk about it? That's fine. We won't talk about it. Okay, but I am... I don't. I I, I don't care. Shut up. I'm telling them now. Okay. You be quiet. You stay there. Sorry. It is Women's Day. I'm sorry for oppressing you. Yes. I'm sorry for being born the way I was. Bad patriarchy boy. I'm sorry for... Speaking of the patriarchy... blue and trucks. I was at... (laughs) How dare you? Damn, I know, that's it's disgusting. Like gender norms. It's disgusting. Despicable. Go play with some Barbies until you re- readjust. Yeah, that's that's what good parenting is now, is forcing a, a, a three-year-old boy to play with Barbies and if he picks up the truck, they go, hey, hey, put it down! Put it down! Put it down or one day you'll be a rapist! Oh... <laughs> 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 uh, I'm um, speaking of the <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, the patriarchy. Mm. I had a uni class yesterday, and yeah. we read a literature piece. Yeah, that had a couple in it, a man and a woman. It was oh, set, that's fucked. It was set in the 1920s. That's heteronormative. Yeah, they were they were married, so mm. it's husband and wife. Yeah, and um, they didn't have a good relationship. I would say it was it was pretty bad. Mm. But there was one one. Why girl, was it bad? Well, the man was just disinterested and the woman was preoccupied. Right. They were both preoccupied in their own ways. So that sounds like it was 100% the man's fault. 
Well, that's exactly what one of the social justice warriors in my class was saying. Yeah. She, so there's one man in this story, the husband, one man. That's too many. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's fine because it wasn't Women's yeah. Day then. It was yesterday. Okay, all right. All right. So one's so. fine. Any more than one, that's bad. They'll start raping people. <laughs> that's true. I mean, when you get a couple of boys <laughs> in the room, and, yeah, a bit of raping starts happening. Um. So this girl in my class referred to this man in the text as the father, dad, patriarchal, boyfriend, husband, figurehead. So she wants to fuck her dad, basically, (laughs) is what... Oh, husband? That must mean father because they have sex. I don't know, but she literally Dude, said that's true. If Freud was in words. that class, he'd be getting a little stiffy. <laughs> he'd be like, oh, I knew it. He'd probably be really interested in this whole movement. And the daddy thing, he would just be like mm. so vindicated. Yeah, Freud started the daddy movement, really. Uh, he, or at least Freud got was half the daddy the of the daddy movement. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe that she used that string of words and I'm really looking forward to being in class with her and maybe one day I hope to sit at her table and argue with her about... You're such an asshole. Well, it would I just be it. really fun for me mm. <laughs> if I could... Because it wasn't... The piece wasn't about gender or sex or the patriarchy or power struggles. Mm. Anyway, I'm just ranting. Let's go back to my exciting news. I never went away from it. You did. No, you did. Sorry. It's International Women's Day. Yeah. My bad. That's right. Anyway, the as uh, because International Women's I'm Day, organize, I'm giving my platform to you. I'm going to organize a cuck for you later. No, can we not <laughs> ever even suggest that? I really don't want that. But, you know, it is Women's Day and that would be empowering. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm done with International Women's Day jokes now. Do you guys see now, after listening to the live um, podcast, what I was so distressed about? Yeah, that was fucked. Like, that man, email. That guy. You know what like, gets me as well is that is what's funny is like, for all of us, the cuck email, right? It ended. <laughs> but for all of those people are all just like living their life. This dude's fucking his mate's mum. His mate, his mate's dad is watching and into it. The poor cunt has no idea that it's happening, and they're hanging out, going bowling and you shit. Know what I think, I think that they should. And tell- like his mate would be like, "Oh, I got a strike! I just beat you in bowling." <laughs> and his mate would just be like, "Yeah, but I fuck your mum regularly, so Do you, you know can what? beat me in bowling." That, they dude. should probably, they should just tell the son. Because these things, like, no, they shouldn't freaks, ever. Run, freaks run in packs. He could be into it. It could be a whole family <laughs> thing. <laughs> Can you tell your announcement? I'm telling you. Okay. By the minute, people are turning this shit off. <laughs> As if this is so... It is great. I'm telling It's a good podcast. But okay. by the minute, all these people are like, oh, I've got a fucking notification. Okay, so my most exciting announcement is that I am starting my own podcast. Hooray! What's it called? Ravenous. Congratulations. Welcome. Oh, no, that one's broken. Get another one. Quick. So it's a weekly podcast. I don't know. Is that one? It's a weekly podcast. Woo. Yay. So tell me about your podcast. (laughs) Well, it's going to be me Mm. (laughs) talking about things that are interesting to me. Yep. And... Maybe it will be interesting to you. Not you, Lewis. Like, maybe... Do you think you'd find it interesting? The first episode was good. I've, I've heard it. It was good. The um, Basically, Jazz is... Uh, I don't know if you can tell by listening to the podcast. I dumb it down a lot. But Jazz, <laughs> Jazz is always getting obsessed with new things. She's always researching stuff okay, that interests her. So, I was her. thinking about this today. So, I'm, I'm pretty much like... A massive nerd. I'm a big intellectual wanker. Yes. So if if like Stephen Fry was a Australian girl, mm. it would probably be me. Yeah. This is another thing for you being gay because it's like Stephen Fry. I don't like I'm this. One third um, male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So ja- I mean, but, to give you an example, at the moment, Jazz is reading a psychology textbook for fun. It's a psychiatry textbook. I don't care. You're reading a textbook for fun. It's not actually a textbook. It's a diagnostic manual. 
I got it from the That is for today. like clinical okay. psychiatrists so look, to here. diagnose their have patients. Here. Can you see, if you're watching the video, see how thick this thing is? It's the DM, DSM-5, which I heard about doing psychology The Diagnostic Statistical Manual. And you're just reading it for fun. You're well, insane. I got here I bet today. that disorder is in there. Reading textbooks it's for fun. It's not actually. Well, I haven't finished cover to cover, but... <laughs> But um, I got here today, you were working with Luke, and I just sat there with the, the book. And read a textbook. And what did I do, I've never seen Liz? anything like that. And, and literally, she'll read it by herself. I'm not talking to her because <laughs> me and Luke are wor- working, but she'll just be by herself. And then literally every two minutes, she'll go, oh, wow, just to herself. <laughs> do you do that when you're by yourself alone? Yeah. That's so weird. No, it's not weird. I read every night and I, I reckon maybe once I've gone. That's oh, because you're not cool. learning amazingly interesting things. Excuse me. I'm reading about a 20,000 year intergalactic no, war. No. about the betray- No, it's Women's Horace Day and you will stop talking about this. There's not many women in Warhammer. It's quite patriarchal. <laughs> I fucking hate Warhammer. You're the biggest nerd I know. I read textbooks you're and you're a bigger women nerd can't than be me. Space you're just a dumb nerd. They See, I'm a smart nerd. Battle. You're a dumb nerd. You're the type of nerd who plays Dungeons and Dragons to pretend he has friends. <laughs> nah, I don't think I would. Actually, I played Star Wars role playing once when I was a kid and I loved that. So, so, my podcast owned. Is <laughs> 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 um, so, my podcast is going to be. About What's it called? I've already hold on. You stop. Okay. You this is the <laughs> Women's Day, Day Sorry. podcast. Let me Well, talk. only two only two thirds of this day is for you. Yeah. You fucking one you third f- of me is one being third repressed. patriarchal oppressive cunt. That's why I only took two thirds of a donut today. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't identify her as that. It's just it's so funny. You could be like there are so many genders out there, I reckon everyone could find one. That suits them. That's probably not fully it's masculine. It's almost or as feminine. if um, yeah, it's just a yeah. This um, is your joke. I've seen it. Um, this, this, this is made up. <laughs> you've said uh, you've said this so many times. Yeah, that's a, that's the whole point. Gender is made up. Sex is not different. Different things, Lewis. You're not right. intellectual enough. Okay, so if you want to listen to a wanker tell everyone how smart she is, I'm actually really. De- <laughs> uh, I'm quite, like fairly upset that I don't have that British accent. Why? So you sound you know, the smarter one you than talk, you are. You talk a bit like this. Like a fucking wanker. Yeah, you talk like. You go on IQ oh. and you say and you say a three out of ten joke and you go, oh, <laughs> and everybody laughs. Not because it's funny, it's but just, because they want to I, seem if I like they're like intelligent. This, if I spoke like this, everyone would think I am so much more intellectual. I would think you're so annoying. I hate Hermione. She talks like that. <laughs> I almost I almost <laughs> tapped out of the Harry Potter movies just because of how much she talked. Yeah, that's and you know what's funny is great thing to say on Women's Day is, is hey man Emma Watson you're not no one should ever listen to anything you have to say <laughs> like you played a smart hey, character she went to in Brown. a movie about wizards yeah and then she she graduated and went to an Ivy League college and what did she, she study has, uh, liberal arts oh so we should all listen to her she probably took gender she, role she studies did, she she studied liberal arts. And got a scholarship because she's famous. No, she's I a think big, she would have been full fee paying. She's a big advertising campaign for the university. We should definitely listen to her because she's well, I played think, one smart character in a movie. I don't think there's any reason and then to did discredit her. Sense. I don't think there's any reason to discredit her. Maybe don't give her like you shouldn't be following her around. But what has she done that makes you think that you should discredit her? Um, well, she did Harry Potter and then couldn't top it. It's pretty good. She was in Perks of Being a Wallflower, really good. She, that was a really good movie. She played really well. That was a good movie. Although, actually, no, I kind of really hate her acting. <laughs> no, that was a good movie. She had nothing to do with that, though. Oh, good script. It was just some of it was a bit heavy-handed, and she was trying it. Like, it doesn't... Ugh, can you tell cunts about your podcast, so, please? It, so, it'll be the main topics. It can be about anything, whatever I'm interested in, which changes. So, the reason it's called ravenous is because I have a ravenous mind. My oh. mind is... Do you know that that sounds so wanky? Is it true? I mean, yeah, it's true. But but you could have said, you've said it in the wankiest way possible. You could have said, I love information. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not enticing. I, hey, I'm also an Again, artist. you said enticing, which is a very wanky word. You could have said, that doesn't okay, make people want to listen to it. Part of my identity is that I am like two-thirds wanker. Right. So you're <laughs> two-thirds wanker, one-thirds man. Fuck. 
Um, no, it's just I am. I like. No, it I is like a big good, words. It's a, it's a good podcast, and like, so no. Let me tell you what. Like the okay. topics that I'm probably going to cover will be things like psychology, um, spirituality, science. I really like neuroscience. Um, I really like social commentary. Yeah. And the arts. So they're mm-hmm. probably things. I, it can be about anything. And I will also talk about my life. So a bit of like this sort of stuff that you get from Lewis where it was like, oh, this happened to me. That <laughs> that guy at the coffee shop at Gloria Jeans. Oh, the dude, the bondage guy. <laughs> what are <laughs> you? Hello. What do you want? Hello, <laughs> hello, you want? <laughs> cappuccino. Hey, you, you like it when I fuck you like that. <laughs> yeah, tap it here. Thank you. <laughs> jazz, jazz can't go in there anymore because that's your local place. It's oh, not mine. Yeah, I that's never where go there. He never gets the. I, that's my favorite coffee. And and you have to talk to him every morning and think about. I him mean, it was up hard a, already because he is such a fucking weird voice. But now it's basically impossible. The first time I went in there after I heard you say that on your podcast, I was just like, <laughs> actually trying so hard. Like my face was going red. It was just like, don't laugh, don't laugh, <laughs> don't laugh in his face because you're thinking about him fucking his wife. Yeah, do you like that, baby? What do you like? <laughs> um. But no, but I've heard the first episode, which is out now, by the way, if you want to go get it. Um, yeah, so look up Ravenous with Jasmine Artio or just Ravenous. It should come up. How do they spell Artio? A-R-T-I-O. Yeah, it's good. And you know what? If you want to, if you would like a break from like comedy and people screaming about shit by themselves, if you listen to me, Luke's or Mike's podcast, it's actually, it's it's a good break from comedy and but Shit it's like not that. like I'm not like trying to find the ultimate in intellectual truth. Because that's like, the worst thing about. Those, and it's not a boring genre. podcast. It's not meant to be like here. Let us sit down and have a lecture. It's like these are things I I have gone over so many different topics because this is literally you're my passionate hobby. About. This is literally my hobby, and it's been constant since I was probably like 15. Where it's like you know going on a Wikipedia trail because yeah. you found something really fascinating to you. I have so much banked up knowledge. I have so much. Would you say I'm fairly wise? Yeah. I'm fairly wise because I've really lo- looked into these things. I've really understand how humans work. And also... What did you talk be- about on the first episode? Well, that was just about me because I wanted people to get a bit more yeah. information about me, you know, why they should listen to me. So there's all sorts of updates on there, you know, what I've been up to recently. Yeah. Um, you get to know a lot more about me. And I really like lay it all out there. Yeah, because everyone's always like, oh, I'll get Jazz on the podcast more. And, and it's uh, if you, if you want to hear more about Jazz and what she's about. There you go. I mean, if you if you'd like a strong woman doing doing <laughs> some shit for herself, it's uh, it's there. There it is. Yeah, and I'm like really, really honest with everything because you know things haven't aren't necessarily been easy for me. Like you know, everyone has struggles in their life, and I know I've had some struggles, and I I really want to be able to share that with people. Of well, especially what being been a woman. Through. I mean, that's that's the hardest Two-thirds job in the woman. world. Sorry. Two thirds woman. My bad. Yeah. It's, I mean, the it's, only thing being hard it's about the only thing harder than being a woman is, is being a de- is being a demigirl. <laughs> 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 Fuck. That just makes me think of a of a fucking girl called Demi I knew in high school. She was a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> So the Ravenous podcast, look it up. I'll be diving into all sorts of new topics. Um, you can recommend a topic if you think you want to hear my opinion on something. I might have already researched it or I might look into it. Um, uh, I'll also, so I'll start each episode with just talking about my life recently and ranting about something like we we're ranting about Women's Day today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Like I get up to a lot of interesting stuff. Do you, would you say I have an interesting life? Yeah, because you just get obsessed with weird shit and then you but just But it's not do just it. that. I'm not just sitting around reading books and Wikipedia articles. No, you just I am do a weird. very active person. Do you think... I, I have a very interesting life. Yeah, because you're always just doing shit. Because I'm always... Like, I need to do that! And then you just go and do it. <laughs> the amount of times Jazz shows up at my house unannounced. Hi, we're doing this now! And I'm doing something else. I'm like, I can't. She goes, too bad. We're going bowling for no reason. No, you're the one who likes bowling. Whatever. Like we're bowling. seeing this movie. We're going for a drive. We're going here, there. I could never cheat on you because you'd show up. <laughs> for sure. Well, I'm glad that there's a reason. Uh, well, that's the only reason, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, tune in. Listen to the episodes. If you're not sure, give it a listen. Um, I'll also be answering advice questions. So send your advice questions through 
if you don't want Lewis's opinion, or if you do want his opinion, you want someone else's opinion. As you well. wanted to get cross reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay. Do you know how many times I hear the podcast question that the listener has written in to you, and then what you answer seems to be almost entirely different. Like you're not even like you misunderstood the fucking question. No. No. This happened. Of course, you don't know when. All the time. I've heard of you. I'm like, you're, it's like... Give me an example. Did you read the question? Probably every episode. The 152 <laughs> episodes. No, right? what I always do examples. is I read the question, I give them the piss take answer, and then I tell them what no, I actually No, sometimes think. I'm like, I don't think you even actually understood what they were saying or like the underlying problem that they're having. Well, you hey, get- man, it's a comedy podcast. <laughs> if you're coming to me for good and advice, it's free. Fuck How off. much did you pay for it? Go see a Is therapist. Is that what you say, right? I don't know. I mean, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my podcast. Listen, listen. Go in. check it out. Yeah. Now, Jazz, I want to talk to you no, about. No, I have. It's still I- Women's Day. Oh, sorry. I have some really funny things May to talk to you about. May I talk to you about? Well, can I talk about my things first? Okay, yeah. What well, is International Women's Day? I mean, uh, I'll just I'll just sit in the corner and okay, and have a penis and oppress you. No, you can't oppress me today. <laughs> oh, sorry. So the book that I've been reading, the DSM five. Just quickly, here's an email. I just wanted to thank you, and then it's a big email about all the advice that I've been given. <laughs> you wrote that yourself. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's a lovely <laughs> girl. <laughs> Um, so here's some mental disorders that I just quickly found today when I was flicking through this, um, textbook. Do you know, there's a disorder, premature and delayed ejaculation is considered a mental disorder. That's interesting. Cause I would have thought that it's a physical thing. Well, they, I think they've put everything in here, which is like psychosomatic as well. But is that, is so there's enough basis of the problem right. in psychology that they've decided it's a psychological disorder. But is it a disorder because coming quickly causes distress or is that the only symptom of just... I'm oh, not sure. I quick. haven't read the whole thing yet. Oh, okay. But well, it's good that you brought it up then. <laughs> if no, I've these are just... I don't know, okay, another one is conduct disorder. Have you heard of conduct disorder? Uh, sounds like I, something I have. <laughs> it's literally just like you've been a very naughty boy. Oh, just being an asshole yeah. and not following the rules. They're like just lying, stealing. Conduct disorder. Conduct That's funny. disorder. It's almost a fucking show title. Yeah, it's like they pretty much made it up to explain like adolescent boys, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this one, gender dysphoria. That's when you are transgender. Well, it I would in, say that it is in the manual of mental illnesses. But I. I would say that if you were born and in your head you feel like something that physically you're not, that's a disorder. But perhaps the way to treat that is by transitioning. Perhaps. Right? Well, that's very interesting. I have Because I would say that gender dysphoria is, is only something that you have when you have not transitioned. But how do we know that it's not a mental illness? That's what it's in the mm. it's in the mental illness journal, right? So maybe well, some that's, of it... that's the debate that everyone's he, having. How did you get born in a male body feeling like you're a female? That's, yeah. you know, even... Okay, we can fix that by turning you into a female, right? Yeah. But why did it happen in the first place? Well, it's interesting. I've, I, I watched a really interesting documentary. So with trans people in the brain, there's actual physical differences for people who who... Like 99% of the time, if someone's like, I'm trans, I need a transition, you can actually see that in the brain. Um, How? I don't know. I don't remember. This is Spear <laughs> Sundays. Spear Sundays. But all I know is the gist of it. If you want to know, come, come to the Ravenous podcast. There's, there's literally, literally physical uh, differences in the brains okay. of people so that are more similar to whatever gender they want yeah. to be. Okay. Um, but the whole thing is, uh, 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 the, the counter-argument, counter-argument to that is, the suicide rate of people who trans, who transgender, who transition, sorry, is really high, and so, and the counter argument to that is, the suicide rate's so high because they're oppressed and people don't accept them. Okay. However, the counter argument to that is, it's too high, even when you factor that in. Yeah. So there'd probably be a lot of comorbid conditions. Yeah. So it's just I don't know. I just I. I there would be a I'm, lot. I'm grateful that I like my dick. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay. So this I have this a story about this. So I want you to 
Can yeah. you close your eyes and imagine this is happening to you as I as I read it out? Are you gonna do something to it? No, I'm not gonna. I'm just, it's, uh. I'm just gonna verbally tell you. No, Go close ahead. your eyes. You've got one eye open. No, I don't. Hey, you've got two eyes open. Two eyes. That's right. I got two eyes open. Okay. Close your eyes. No, you need to imagine it. Imagine this is happening to you. You can interrupt me as I go along. Okay. Okay. So imagine that you're a boy. Easy. Fuck yeah. Take and that, women. You're growing up, oh. and you realize yeah. that you don't feel like a boy. Maybe you're a demi boy. Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm only two thirds boy. Maybe you're not a boy at all. Yeah. Maybe you're a girl. Okay. How are you feeling? Horny. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably something in the manual about is that, that. Is that it? No. Okay. Okay. So, so pretty much you've realized that you're trans, right? Okay. Okay. You go, oh no, what am I going to do? I'm going to come out to my family. I'm going to get the scissors. Not yet. Okay. Come out to your family. All right. Mom, come out Dad, to your friends. I wish I had a puss- pussy. <laughs> um, everyone accepts you. Oh, sick. I'll probably you start that. living as a girl. Yeah. And then you a decide. giant six foot eight woman. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> my life. I like to see my life sucks. Heels. Yeah, okay. Hi, uh, can I get a, uh, a dress that uh, doesn't show everyone the bottom of my nutsack, please? <laughs> oh, no, because I'm six foot eight. Fair okay. enough. Solution. Yeah. You decide yep. it's time my legs off. to make the chop. Okay. Gonna chop off your nuts. Okay. Chop off your penis. Yep. Have the surgery. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. But But finally, you're a girl, right? You're a girl now. You got your legal sex change. Lit, fam. You got rid of your dick. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you wake up, you see your new pussy, Uh and you realize this is a true story, by the way. Okay. Yep. You've made a terrible mistake. Yep. And you're actually a boy all along. Right, that's fucked. Is this it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. How do you feel? Fucking horrible. So you want to transition back now? No, you can't. Apparently though. there are heaps of people who yeah. transition and then they transition it's really back. High. It's really high. Yeah. What do you um, make of that? I think that sometimes... Do you know what I think? I think sometimes life sucks and, and you find something that reason. you think yeah. will solve your life. If I could just have this one thing. And the great thing about that one thing is usually it's always unattainable. And yeah. as long as it's unattainable, you have hope for the future. Because you can always work towards this impossible I'm working thing. towards this impossible Which is, I mean, that's a, that's this a gambling addiction. This happens with everything, right? Yeah. Like, oh, my it's life will be addiction. fixed it's when I win the what jackpot. What about all those famous people who make it and they have butloads of money and they have all the girls they and want? And they're not happy. And yeah. they're not happy because yeah. they attained the unattainable thing and then they fucking end up overdosing or committing suicide. Yeah. Because they're so unhappy that they're just trying to escape their reality. Well, yeah, that's that's what's interesting about it is is the the massive. What are you gonna do now? You don't have a dick anymore. People who want to transition back. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's high. crazy. Yeah. I read that today. A real story. I haven't read the whole article yeah. yet, but it's a real story. Yeah. So this person now they like how do you? That person is the protagonist and the antagonist of their own story. Well, you just true. chopped off <laughs> your own dick. Yeah. Like you don't have anyone else to blame about that but yourself. I know it's crazy. And then and then that's that's all of How those stories. How are you going to live with yourself, Lewis? All those stories is what makes me go when they start talking about transitioning children. Oh, it, that's even nuts. even when it's backed by psychologists and therapists and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I just I don't, maybe that makes me a bigot. But I'm like, even if it's backed you by medicine, therapists, and all that kind of shit, I'm like, I don't, I don't think a child, even if an adult backs them, I don't think a child is fully developed to make that kind of huge, permanent decision. I don't think anyone under the age of 18 should be able to make permanent decisions, life-altering decisions. No, for anything. I mean, you no, can't get anything. a tattoo. You can't, you no. can't get drunk. But, like, I think that attitudes around trans people are going to be you know how every generation grows up they get old and they're all backwards on something because society has changed well, that's so what's much. so funny about all these people who have a go at the older generation like that's not going to be them 
Yeah. You know, like all the people. Yeah, who, that's going to be us. And I think it will be mainly around trans because I like I'm like we're just having a reasonable discussion, you and me, right? Yeah. We're just saying talking about this logically, but I feel like the the it doesn't matter what we think attitudes towards it are going to change so much in our lifetime yeah. that one day us having this reasonable discussion about what makes people trans how many how come so many people you know aren't happy when it happens are there other explanations yeah. where do we draw the yeah. line that sort of thing is going to become well look at you fucking transphobic you know it'll be rallies of people who are, you know fuck you you lose well, yeah, your you lose your tv deal over what's interesting it. about it is is i put up a bit about my put up my bit about kylie jenner um, being self-made according to Forbes and the bit was like she's not self-made she's uh, born into the Kardashians and I and I in within that bit I made fun of Caitlyn Jenner and I talked about I talked about Bruce Jenner and when I was talking about Bruce I said he but then throughout the joke so I made fun of Bruce before the transition I said he I saw that as then, soon as I saw that I knew then, you were wrong and then when I said you were, you were being offensive you it's called you dead named him Lewis that's like I know, calling him the worst thing in the world. Uh, even I'm doing it now. I'm calling it him. Hey! That's her. You can't Caitlyn Jenner her. didn't win those races. Fucking Bruce did. He was in the men's division. Bruce won those races. Bruce what are you trying races. to claim? Bruce won the races, but Caitlyn's the one who ran over the person in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlyn with the suit. But that's the thing. Like, I... Dead naming is just acknowledging the past, and especially with a famous no, person. No, it's calling it. It's not the same. It's not saying you used to be that. No, it's calling I, them here's that the thing. Now. I think if you if you see a trans person in real life and you call them their old name, that's fucked, and you should not do that. However, if you were talking, it would be an affront. You'd have to choose to call them their old. Name. I mean, literally last week I had a conversation about a person who's trans who I bumped into the female. The, the true version of them, them. Oh. Um, and, and I, I met them, them and blah, blah blah talked whatever and then I had talked with a friend the next day about meeting the new trans female version of this person yeah. and then we had a conversation of man I remember when her name was this they were so self-conscious and they were strange and we had no idea uh, but now it's it's amazing to see that they've kind of Blossom, they seem so confident and happy. Yeah. I mean, is that dead naming? Is that? I don't think so. That, exactly, that's acknowledging surely, the past. Surely, to do that would be like acknowledge, disregarding yeah. reality. It would be like refusing. Exactly. It would be like saying the Holocaust never happened. Because the thing is, with, with my joke, when I was talking about Bruce before the transition, I said no, he. No, but you after you fucked up. No, when I when I talked about Caitlyn, I said she. No, but you fucked up. You weren't trying to fuck up, but you fucked up. I How? swear you said it wrong. Because you, you were talking about Caitlyn Jenner. I think once I may have said he accidentally. You fucked up at But for the once. most part with the Caitlyn Jenner bit, but it's I was the, saying that's she. That's the point. Is that like we are going to end up being so backwards yeah. on this. Because we're going to be, I'm confused. Are you meant to say he or she? Or are yeah. we allowed to talk about it? Like, I don't know. Probably the next wave, the Gen Zs are probably already laughing at us. Because we're so behind on gender issues. Oh no, Gen Z is going to be conservative. Uh, I don't know about conservatives. Uh, yeah, well, not like I've not read, traditionally. I've read a book about Gen Z. Not, not traditionally yeah, conservative, I, I but like more. I would say more right wing than us. No, here's the thing: they're socially and developmentally stunted, so they appear conservative, but it's only because all of their social interactions that used to ha take place in groups where you would mm. be face to face with other people and you would be egging each other on, you'd be getting social cues, we'd go, Oh, we're fifteen now, let's start drinking. Oh, we're this sixteen now, this let's start bad. having sex. Oh, we're yeah. seventeen now, let's start smoking pot. Yeah. You know, oh we're eighteen now, let's go bash some cars. You <laughs> no, yeah, never mind. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Have you talked about that? Oh heaps, I talk about it all the time. Best yeah, thing. We but we do best in cars. cars. They they're missing out on all of these situations, so they're not getting vital So maybe not conservative so, but less empathetic. They're not, it's not that they they don't have the empathy. They don't have the experience. Okay, so they're saying, you know that whole um, people on campus being like overly concerned about their safety and thinking that uh, words of violence and... Yeah, emotional... I, I, the emotional craziest safety. thing, emotional safety, yeah, kind of. But like, to me, that's being safe from someone act like actively being mean to you on purpose with the intent to be mean rather than 
But someone having the, a debate that hurts your feelings. Intention doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, it's the interpretation of it. emotional yeah. danger as physical danger. Yeah. It's be, there's a myriad of reasons, but... Like one of it is because they're not having these interactions yeah. which they they are less adults so this is anyone mm. from 95 below um, born in 95 you yeah mean. born yeah. in 95 below yeah uh is gen z so 95 it's because the switch is because that's those kids grew up on social media yes so yeah. we're 94 so we just missed out we got I'm half sure, and half yeah, yeah yeah but i like i was pretty old b- before i got social media i was I was yeah. particularly weird because my family was Well, I got onto it when it started, when it was coming out, when it was normal. So, but like, I like think we didn't have like Instagram stories 17. and Snapchat. No. Nah. Like, we didn't have any of that stuff. There was so no way to post kids, every day, All basically. these kids are now sitting at home yeah. um, feeling anxious because they're having FOMO because they're like, look at all this yeah. stuff on social media that I should be doing, but I'm sitting here and feeling anxious talking to their friends online rather than meeting up with them on person, partially mm. because of convenience partially because it's weird right it's weird if yeah. you're not in a socially hanging out group to be the person always suggesting that you hang out yeah so th- that's what they're saying they're getting to college campuses now and they're basically still children they're they're like at the level that 14 year olds used to be yeah like before you start to, to go through that like rebellious adolescence yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, so there's, there's, a, there's, there's a whole heap of reasons. I can't remember. Why what's what's interesting is, is I was watching this video where a guy goes and he debates college people on campus, right? And he films it all. Um, and he talked to this one girl who was protesting him. Uh, and and uh, she didn't want to talk to him. And he was like, oh, but you've come to protest my thing. Why don't, why don't we talk? And I'll hear why you don't like me. You hear what I think. And yeah. then... I yeah, mean, you've. And she's like, no, I don't want to open a dialogue. But he was kind of going, no, but you have. You can't like come. And then she basically got down to, I don't. You can't exploit my emotional labor. Yeah. For your stuff, and I was like, wow. Having a conversation about what you believe versus someone who disagrees with you, not even like extremely. Yeah. Is labor to these people yeah. because yeah. like that's. Which, Which means, means if you're calling a conversation with someone no, who you so don't completely agree with labor, that's, that's the hardest thing you've ever no, experienced. So Which means you have the best life on planet Earth yeah. and you're still complaining. So I don't think that Gen Z is necessarily going to be conservative. I think Gen Z is overly concerned with their emotional safety. Like they, they haven't had enough life experience. It's pretty much like every... They're, they've been given everything in life. Like, we fixed everything, right? We fixed physical danger. We fixed emotional abuse. You know, our parents' generation, all of our parents have a story about I think a that shit parent. At least in had, Australia, like really bad anyway, people my age and below, I've maybe met one or two genuinely racist people. Yeah, we're like, we fixed, like, we fixed everything. So whereas if you go to my grandparents, you will hear casually racist shit all the time. And even, you know... Uh, my, my parents' generation, you'll hear not not much racism, but a little bit of homophobia. Yeah. Whereas people my age and below, I've I've never met anyone genuinely homophobic. I know they obviously exist, but I've never yeah. personally encountered them. So I don't know. It's just clearly getting so much better because we we. Uh, granulate right as we refine it we go along it's the human nature as soon as you solve one problem you start to focus on the next smallest problem you start with the big problems you start to slowly zoom in we've eliminated all of the horrible problems problems. we basically Basically, if if you live in the first world world war a big war yeah in 70 years yeah 80 almost 80 years if you live in the first world you can almost guarantee that you won't die by accident you no, know no, accidents are accidents no I'm, i mean i'm talking about like you're not not maybe not by accident but you're not just going to randomly just get killed by something like i don't know a, f- a fire or an animal or a unsafe work condition i think what you're saying conditions. is that you're not in physical danger yeah you're no, there's you're no never, physical danger the the likelihood an accident can happen but you're never actually in the danger the likelihood of physical danger is so muscular. so small that yeah. you can only die by a freak accident pretty much yeah 
or a, or a or a one in a million so crazy it's pretty psycho. Much the generation after us had nothing to worry about at all. There was no yeah. the, the biggest problem in their life started to be well the times that they didn't feel right inside the times where they felt emotionally yeah. uh, disturbed, which makes which makes sense I guess. And they're overly sensitive, and they don't have the resilience because they haven't had the life experience of mm. doing that you know naughty shit where you start to realize hey I can cope through a lot like. Yeah. You know, I can be a bad person and it'll be fine. I can have other people, you know, be drunk and come up to me and be aggressive or assaulting or insulting and mm. it'll be fine. You know, I can be in bad yeah, situations. That's, that's what will be really interesting is when all these kids who are like 15 or whatever, when they grow up, get a bit older and they start getting drunk and, and they have people around them that, that are being cunts and being aggressive and stuff yeah is how will they handle that because that's fucking next level compared to well you know here's the thing is that the generation really isn't coping yeah the mental health percentages it's pretty flat across this past century each generation that comes along has pretty much the same amount of mental disorders. Of like depression and stuff. yeah depression anxiety suicide attempts self-harm people yeah. being hospitalized for self-harm it's pretty static for the past century come along gen z people born after 95 it doubles Wow. And you can't just That's say... Crazy. So here's the thing. You say we're maybe... We're fucking something up then. Yeah, we're fucking something up. That's the point. Mm. You know, something's going wrong. So you say... It's got to be the social media. Well, that's what they say. That's the thing that changed everything else. Because, yeah. you know, even with us, we didn't really have anything too big to worry about when it came to getting in danger. We weren't really in danger at all. Mm. Like, you know, what's the but difference? We, that's the we difference. never even... We never... We didn't have like reputations in the same way that younger people no. do with social media. So they they think it's all got to do about um, the way they interact with social media and how it's replaced. You actually mm. need in person social connections to feel comfortable and secure, and a screen yeah. can never give you that because you actually get neurotransmitter releases mm. that you need to combat depression and anxiety that you get from face to face encounters with people. And it's, it's your brain it's rewarding people, rewarding humans for working together. Yeah, and it's also there's all because sorts of no reasons. Man like, is an go back to hunter gatherer society. If yeah. you were cut off from the group, you die. You died. Yeah. So there was good reason for your brain to make you depressed or make you anxious. Oh no, you, you haven't seen someone for a long time. You got to fucking yeah. You're gonna get mauled by a saber toothed tiger. Yeah. And that's why that's why therapy works, and that's why when you're depressed, you should reach out to people because being around people in your community and feeling part Cutting of Cutting yourself helps. off is self-defeating, 100%. Yeah. And it, sometimes it feels like it's the only option because that's the headspace you're in. But if you're cutting yourself off, you are sealing your fate. I did that in high school. I was like, oh, when I was having a rough time, when I was being an angsty teen and at, when I was like 16, 17, like everyone was, my solution to that was, oh, well, I'm, I can't work out how to make proper friends, so I'm going to cut myself off. And I've never been sadder in my life. Yeah. And then one day I was just like, well, this isn't working. I need a, I've got, I was like when I was, when I was 17, when I just turned 18, cause I was a little bit older than my, my peers was the start of year 12. And I, I kind of, something clicked and I was like, if I don't make friends this year, I know I don't want to go to uni. Yeah. I won't have friends. Yeah. So I was like, I, it's all or nothing. I've got nothing to lose. Yeah. And I reached back out and I started making you put myself yourself talk back to out people, there. put myself out there, and started what happened? being me. what happened when you started to develop those social connections? I became incredibly happy and I gained the confidence to start comedy. Yeah. And I am so happy and have been literally ever since then. It would have affected your self-esteem fundamentally. Yeah. Change, changed my whole life trying. And what would have happened if you were self-defeating and allowed yourself to stay in your bedroom and uh, just playing video games? Yeah, I just would have probably still what would you doing be doing that. today probably that would wouldn't you have, have met, met me wouldn't have met you i wouldn't have done comedy wouldn't have met luke you'd just be uh, wouldn't have met radio mike a, which is you'd pretty just good, be some guy with a bad haircut right because i wouldn't have got a you good had haircut the worst haircut when i met this guy oh my god like he's so Go look lucky at my old i videos. love him yeah like i idiot. felt i really fell in love with his spirit like, he fucking did because there was nothing else. Was nothing I was broke. Else. I wasn't <laughs> successful in comedy. I was ugly as fuck. Oh, but you're still ugly. Yeah, suck my dick. 
You're not but, ugly, baby. No, I'm not anymore. I fucking was you though. You look like you look like a guy a lead in an indie film. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not I'm not in the Avengers. <laughs> That's like you know, code. but I'll be in Shield, the Netflix <laughs> The Netflix Marvel stuff. I'll be in yeah. that, you know. Yeah. But all, not the lead, like the supporting character. Yeah. But this um, like discussion about Gen Z, that's exactly the type of thing I'll be talking about on my podcast. Oh, fuck. We've almost been going for an hour. Should we? Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Let me just do another plug. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'll find some. I haven't picked the emails. So I'll find so some So that's stuff. exactly the type of thing I'll be talking about on my podcast because that's the stuff that's really interesting to me. Like, why is the world the way it is? And there's so many different books, like all the stuff we talked about today. Like, I read The Coddling of the American Mind by Jonathan Hyde. I can't remember his surname. Yeah, Jazz is always reading my mind and life-changing books and she talks I my read... ear off about it. <laughs> and... I read um, Lost Connections by Johan Hari. That's about depression and anxiety. I listened to several podcasts, Joe Rogan Park. This is just about what we talked about today. Like there are so many other things that I have opinions on um, that I would love to talk about on the podcast, uh, my podcast. And Oh, this is good. Or well, actually the, the subject really, line is good. This stuff's really interesting, right? I'm talking about the emails. <laughs> I know. Come on, it's still okay. Women's Day. Be polite. Oh, sorry. Your podcast is better than mine. Everyone go subscribe and give it five stars. Review it because it does. It actually does help, five especially stars. when podcasts whoop, whoop. are new. Um, go and listen to uh, the intro and the trailer and the episode Jazz did and give her five stars it, and she'll rock it to the top of the iTunes. Watch it happen. Whoop, go and do that. Um, um, also, okay. if you want to follow me on Instagram, that in case you're not sure about the podcast or if you just want to follow me, that's fine. I can plug my Instagram, right? Oh, yeah, go for it, Mike. There's always... <laughs> that guy. Can I... Let's do this, all right? Enough I plugging. I haven't said my podcast... My, my Say your name, name and then we'll do it because otherwise it'll, this will just be plugging for I a million know it's years just plugging, but that's why off. I come on your podcast. I'm just like, here, let me What's your plug. Instagram name? My Instagram name is The Mystical Rationalist. Fuck, man. Pick something easy to spell. No, it's The, T-H-E, yeah. Mystical Rationalist. Rationalist. Fuck, man. I changed just, my name all the time. How about Jazz? How's that? No, that's boring. Okay. Anyway. Okay. The subject line. I post really pretty pictures because I like art. The subject line <laughs> is... I haven't read the email. Oh, okay. Hit me up with some advice. I love giving advice. Okay. Actually, we'll do this one sec. Actually, no. This one probably be long. So, this might, might be the only one we do. American chick with fucked reverse cuck history. Why is all of your questions about cucking? Because my listeners are either... Alpha cuckers or beta cuckies? <laughs> There's no in between. And but then a bunch a of lesbians like, mixed in. Is she the one? Is it, What's it called? Okay, there's the cuck and the cucky. What's the girl called? A whore. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Just the... Is the, there a name? We should look that up. Just like the person like really having living the best life. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't like that. No. I, swear, I just don't get it. That's the thing about sexual fetishes. If it's not your fetish, there's no way that you can get it. Yeah. Like you just you, yeah, you can't be learn a fetish by that. Can't learn a fetish. Yeah, the amount of times I've looked at a, like a foot and gone, I just don't get it. Like even I uh, sometimes I've I've looked at like I've looked at like a foot fetish Twitter thing, yeah. and I've gone, I just want to know what a good foot is because I, I I've seen bad ugly feet, yeah, but I've never seen like a sexy foot. So I'm like, all right, let's see if I can pick out the hot feet from normal feet and I look at like a foot fetish account and I just go it's just a foot <laughs> like I can't even Do tell they have like a nice pedicure yeah they, they have pedicures that's the only because I was like oh what if I can so I can't even like identify like you know itself. you see a good pair of tits and you're like oh I understand why those are good because they're symmetrical and mm. they're generally bigger and that's why they're good but I look at a foot and I go I don't even understand why that's good well, I, does it? Maybe you don't know the nuances to look maybe. out for. Maybe have, there's like certain shapes with the toes and the that's foot what I and mean. the arch. Stop! Everyone's getting horny. You, <laughs> there's, there's one guy going, yeah. <laughs> Let uh, me read this because it'll probably be long. American chick with fuck reverse cuck history. Oh god. Hey Lou. Hey, you, on my podcast, can people send me advice questions about not cuck related stuff? No, you built you generate the kind of audience you deserve. So this is <laughs> this is my. This burden. is what you deserve, Lewis. Yeah. Um, hey Lou, you can call me Tom. Never thought I'd be the type to have a podcast worthy situation, but here I am. It started when I met this American exchange student on a night out. Oh, you hit the jackpot. 
Let's call her Cassie. We basically spent all night together doing dumb shit, hooking up and talking. Throughout the night, she'd be saying things like, you're going to call me, right? And I'd say, I'll see you again. And say, I'll see, I'll see you again, won't I? I ended up hanging, so she's Kane. I ended up hanging with her till 3 a.m. and staying at hers that night. Apparently, this is something she doesn't normally do. Um, Did they have sex or they were just hanging out? I think he would have said sex. I okay, stayed at so hers. they were just hanging out. Yeah. Anyway, come a few days later, uh, I go out on a date with Cassie and everything goes pretty well. She gets me to come out at night again with her and her friends. I leave my bag at her house because she asked me to stay the night. The club we were at closed at one, so everyone got kicked out. I end up with just her and one of my friends at this point since we lost all her friends on the way out. She wanted me. She wanted to find her friends, but my mate wanted to keep going. At this point, she basically goes, you should go with your friend, I'll be fine. So I obviously know something's up now. We find her friends uh, and eventually we're alone together talking, me and Cassie. She finally opens up that there is another guy back home that she still has feelings for, to which my obvious response is, why the fuck are you doing this to me then? Now, now I talk to her for some... Fuck, man. Uh... Talk to her for some time. What's going on? I'm ready to leave until I realize that my bag with all my shit in it is at her house. Uh, I had to get an Uber back with her and her friends and her roommates. When we get to her... story. Fuck, man. Like, edit. Edit uh, your story. Uh, when we get back to hers, she's still trying to hold my hand and act like we're still together. I said, don't act like that when you've just told me you can't be with me. Now we get to the fuck part. Because by the sounds of it, the guy she's confused about is a psychopath. She starts telling me about him, saying it's complicated and that he doesn't even like her. She then goes to say he'd, s- he'd slept in the same bed with her, not having sex while messaging other girls, and would send her Snapchats of him with other girls that he'd been having sex with. Apparently, he'd also tell her to speak to other guys, but when she'd speak to them, he would call her a whore. To be honest, at this point, my mind is blown. She's clearly been emotionally fucking abused by this guy, and apparently half the reason for her coming to Australia was to get away from him. Uh, blah 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 where's the cuck part I don't know I end up just telling her straight what I think this guy is clearly an asshole and has been manipulating her I can see she's conflicted and I told her to message me in a week when she's find time to sort her feelings out and I, that I don't plan on waiting on her forever in the end I understand this whole thing is low stakes because she's only in the country for five months but I like her and I don't want to let her go I'm curious on what your thoughts are on this and if I did the right thing my thoughts are, you tricked me with the subject line and this was a shit story yes, that went on for six paragraphs, bro. Shame, I'll run after you with a bell. Shame. <laughs> uh, she's leaving in five months. Your relationship's over. Next, she's also in love with a psychopath. Yeah, that girl has baggage. Like, don't yeah, get involved. That. Even if you got involved, it would just be for the sex because she's obviously not emotionally available. And clearly, available. From, your, from your email, you're a principled person who's nice and wouldn't treat her like that. And clearly... That's kind of what she's attracted to. Yeah, I would say that she probably wouldn't be... If that's where and, she's and coming from, like she that, probably wouldn't be attracted to People who, who like damaged people or who are attracted to damage and danger, when they get with someone who's not that, they tend to create it because they want it. So that's when she's going to start you know, doing stuff that'll make you angry, maybe cheating on you to create that People tension that they're attracted to. People are addicted to drama. Yeah. Like, if they're addicted to drama, they're addicted to drama. Or they might be addicted to replaying the abuser, abusey relationship that they had when they were younger. That you when know, they were developing. That might be why yeah. she was so attracted to this guy and she couldn't, like, get away from him was because she's carrying some baggage. Yeah. So, I don't know. It just sounds like she's she's probably not worth it, man. Yeah. Like. Go to another yeah. party, meet someone else. You, When it's right, you'll know it. You'll know. Yeah. Yeah, see? Fucking saying that I give the worst advice and then as soon as I say you something didn't like, give it's fucking very advice. wise. That's well, very that's wise. the first time I've heard, <laughs> heard you give any wise advice on this podcast, Lewis. Um, anyway, but no, actually, it's International Women's Day, so she's the best and uh, you're an oppressor. Oh, yeah, that girl. There's nothing wrong with there's her. Why aren't you, you sucking marry her. her toes? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we'll do this one and then I'm going to end it. Down a friend. This one I have read before and it's not bad. Oh. Um, hey, Lou. My name's Murphy. Like down a friend or down a friend? friend. Downy friend. Like downy friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> my friend and I are at a loss. It's our second year, of, uh, second year out of school. So we've all situated ourselves in Brisbane for uni or work. However, a good friend of mine has been left behind. 
This is a hard thing. He's 19. He lives in New South Wales, in a New South Wales country town. He's never had a job, doesn't have his learners. What a fucking loser. Don't call him a loser. <laughs> no, I'm saying because I'm 25 and I All still right. have my learners. No, you have. Oh, no, I've got my learners. Guy, oh, dude. doesn't have his learners. This, yeah, that's bad. I got my learners at 16. So, I've, you know, I'm working on mine. You didn't get your learners at 16. I was with you when you got your learners. Oh, was I 18? Yeah, you would have had to be 18. I was probably thinking about it. When and I was then 16. you lied. Remember, you lied to me about what you got on the test because I got 97% on the test and I was uh, upset that I didn't get 100%. And then you told me that you got 100%. And I was like, I've just met this guy, but there is no way. Because I knew way. it would trigger you. It triggered me so hard. I was like, how, is, how can this Do guy you possibly the whole, be smarter than me? The, the only reason you fell in love with me was because I annoyed the fuck out of you in the perfect way. Yeah. It, like, you, you really towed the line. You, you still do. You daily towed That's the line. That's right, baby. You know Treat a man, keep so, him keen. You know, I was thinking about this today. You know how you say you really dumb me down when you're with me? Yeah. So when I'm not with you, I just pretty much read textbooks, do art, play my piano. Fucking nerd. See friends. Yeah. And I live a cultured life. Do you know what I do when I'm with you? What? Last week, we broke my bed <laughs> because we were jumping on it together. <laughs> We both got on my bed and we just, two That's, fully grown did, adults. This is a $150 bed from Ikea. Yep. And neither of us thought that there was any problem with it. We did break it. the bed, that, but that was fun bed. and that was a bonding moment. Be- I have a bruise on my hand from where we were fixing the bed. That's funny. We had to fix the bed three times because it just kept on breaking. And without me, you'd just be reading textbooks like a massive nerd. You'd have no good you memories. Really, man, you really bring me down. I That's think it's right. okay. We even each other out. Um, so this kid's been left behind. His parents enable his laziness. Uh, we've tried to help him socialize. We even set him up. We even set him up with an attractive girl to have sex with at a party. Even got them in a room together. No results. Okay. So here's the thing. You can't help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. Uh, we've encouraged him to get a job as a last-ditch effort. We even came up with a ploy to give him a diary every now and then so he'd become addicted and get a job. <laughs> That's actually kind of A necessary kind of evil in our minds. Shortened Dude, his life by like five years. That's some mastermind <laughs> shit. No shit. <laughs> They're obviously really concerned about their friend. Their friend is yeah, not thriving. No results. Now he spends his their time friend is like waking so much up less than at 3 a.m. in the afternoon playing video games by himself. At 3, 3 in the afternoon p.m., yeah. Uh, until early the next day while receiving money off his parents to fuel his day drinking and smoking. Oops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you, you just fucked him. In your oh. opinion, is there anything else you think we could do? We care about the cunt and we never leave a man behind. Oh, this is so I was sad. also wondering if there has been any l- memorable friends you've left behind as life has carried on. Have a shit one, uh, boys and girls. Do you know what this reminds me of? Mm hmm. Um, you've read Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life, right? Yeah. He talks about he has a friend in that book because mm. he's from a small town as well. Yeah. Small town in Canada. And everyone moved. It's pretty much exactly yeah. the same story. Everyone moved away and there was just this one friend who, who just didn't. He didn't. And he he got he eventually had to get a job because you have to at some point you know yeah. parents kick you out or something and he just got a job working at the bottle shop or mm. the service station yeah and that's where he worked for his, his whole life. life and he was addicted to marijuana he was addicted yeah. to substances because of course why would you want to commit yeah. yourself to your life but here's the thing jordan peterson is such a wise guy and there was nothing that he could do to save his friend you can't you can't save people um, you can. You've obviously you can done provide, your best. You can provide this guy's avenues. Obviously done. You can display how much your life has improved and how you're moving. I mean, I'm a you know I'm a comedian. The people that I started with, fuck yeah, I've left a lot of people behind in the stand up scene. And even a, a lot of people, that, people before from, that from you know, your high school. Yeah, from my high school as well. There's there's because especially there's such a disparity between you being you know, the archetypal, the person who is following their dreams. That's so far removed from most people's reality. And you think about some people that you yeah. went to school with that, you know, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons with who are not thriving now at all. Yeah, I mean, there I mean, still- I've, I, I, I have stories like that of, of me, of I, what you're doing is you're literally going, come on, this is great. Isn't this amazing? And, and they're just walking or dawdling it's like that movie from what's that movie where, he, where, he, where the horse gets stuck in the mud 
that makes you feel sad. And he's like, come oh. on, man, you got to get out of the mud. And the horse just doesn't move. And he can't pull the horse out of the mud. And all the horse has to do is move and overcome, you know, and triumph. But at the end of the day, the horse has to do it. You can't, you can't do it for your friend, basically. And, and I think there is a level of duty and responsibility as a close friend to try but not at the expense of your own life and your friends. Because at and the at the end of the day, you are who you hang out with. Um, and if your friend, your friend is choosing not to hang out with people more successful than him, so you probably shouldn't be hanging out with him because he's only going to drag you down. Yeah, and, it, and it's say, his life, like, as it, sad as that is. Yeah, and it is his responsibility. And it's really difficult because then you can say, well, what's happened in his life which has made him act the way that he's acting? And you can sign of kind of, in a way, spin it like it's not his fault and he just needs someone to save him. But you can't be his saviour because you could give him every literally every tool that he needs which yeah. it sounds like you you like you're fucking trying to get him addicted to cigarettes like you you're more than giving him the tools that he needs but if you can lead you a can't horse do it to for water, people but yeah. you can't make them drink yeah and if this guy yeah he, he's obviously seeing you guys being happy and seeing what it's like but he's decided that's not for him at this point in his life it, which is not your failure he has decided not to follow your positive example there's kind of nothing you can do like a good example of this is kind of like like me and luke when luke luke's a couple years behind me in comedy and when he started i was like in the very early process of fusing my online audience with my stand-up thing and he saw how beneficial it was for me and he saw it work and so did every other comedian that i started with but he was the only one who actually decided to also do it. And when he decided that, I gave him tools, I gave him best tips and practices, but at the end of the day, he blew up on his own because he chased it and he did it. There were so many people who, who also asked for tools and I helped out and I gave tools and I gave best practices that, that at the end of the day didn't pursue that and are now not doing as well yeah they're not they're not thriving and that's not my fault that's not any anyone's fault and also luke's success is not me i'm not responsible for that he decided to he saw someone doing better than him and he was like i'm gonna i'm gonna do that too yeah. i want to get to that level and now in a lot of aspects, he's way bigger than me he's bigger than me on facebook on instagram yeah he gets more views than i do um, and that's not because of me. That's because of him. Yeah. And, and, and also his success is my success and my success is his success. What you don't want is, is a friend who their loss is your loss and your win is not theirs because they won't come well, with. Well, you need to be able to celebrate you know? and mourn with your friends. Yeah. But this is more about this guy. You can't, you can't, you can't do it for him. Well, a, a better way to say it is you don't want someone who... Because who, your friends, their loss is your loss too. But you don't want someone who only has... Only contributes losses. Do you know what I mean? Like if you have... If well, you, you, look, Jordan, yeah. Jordan Peterson has a chapter, a whole chapter in his book dedicated to this. And I think he's, he's, he's got a lot of wise. He's very well thought out, very well mm. rationed. I would say pick up his book if you can. It's 12 Rules for Life. Um, he has a chapter. I think it's called... It's about surrounding yourself with... It's like hanging out with winners, you right? Have to ha you have to hang out with people more successful than you. The reason why I got to the point that I'm at now and I haven't made it is because I... You know, when I started comedy, I hung around Khaled Kalafala all the time because he was, and I still think is the best, one of the best stand-ups in the country. And I was like, yeah, I need brilliant. to understand how the fuck he can do that. And just from hanging out someone with someone that was like 20 times better than me, I improved so much faster than I would have on my own or with people at my skill level. Because if you're surrounded by people that are, even just as good as you, where you're not better, but also your friends aren't better, you will improve so slowly because there's no example to work towards. So I think a part of 
what Lewis is saying is like it's really towing the line because you need to hang out with people. You need to take care of yourself and you need to not hang around with losers. But then your friend needs someone in their life who is someone to aspire towards. So yeah. I think it's it's more complicated because this is like one of the greatest tragedies of human existence, really. Mm. It's more complicated than we can properly answer. So I would say pick up that book if you can because it, it's but basically the same is situation word for Don't me. help people at the expense of you long term. And don't think it's your fault because it's not your fault. No. It's every, everyone is Can't responsible for themselves. Uh, and it's hard because you're 19 and like the friends you grew up with, your world's so small. When you g- went to school together, your world's only starting to open up, man. Like you've just left school and moved to a city. Do you know how many people are around you now that were not before? It it seems like it is sad, but at the end of the day, probably not going to be that sad in five years. I mean, it's not your fault, man. You can't, you can't save people. He's in a different s- state there's, there's a limit to what you can do. I think you've done what you can. And the only thing that you can do from now is, I wouldn't say abandon him, but I wouldn't say you don't need to keep putting in effort because at the end of the day, sometimes what people need is for you to go, okay, man, make your decision. And all they need to see is is you that you moving up, they're moving down. And then they'll go, oh, fuck, I, ma- I made the wrong decision. And then they'll catch up. Uh, but if they don't do that, I would say just keep loosely in contact with them. Yeah. You know, don't... don't Yeah, don't abandon the dude, but don't sacrifice but yourself. It like they're really good friends. Yeah. So, it might not... You know, that might be completely horrible. Because imagine, imagine... It happens though. There's people... There's people that I was amazing them. friends with when I was 18 that I'm, that I'm not close with at all anymore. And it, I don't know. It's just kind of... It's just know. a sad fact of life. Sometimes the people you go to high school with... You don't end up enemies, but you're also not friends anymore. I don't know. It's really sad. They don't want to leave a man behind. Just read the book. Read the book. We can't fix your problem. Read the book. All right. That's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for listening. It's a bit of a long one. Happy uh, International Women's Day. Yes. Uh, shout out to all you women out there and, and to all you men out women. there. Disgusting. You should yeah. feel fucking ashamed you of yourself rapist. as I do. Sorry, you should be saying this. I'm a... Uh, you're disgusting, you murderers, <laughs> and you're rapists, yep. and you're pedophiles for having a penis. That's right. So that's what we're going to leave you guys on. Check out the uh, Ravenous podcast, the least patriarchal podcast on iTunes. Well, one third patriarchal. That's true. It's a little bit patriarchal. <laughs> it's a little bit patriarchal. Demi patriarchal. <laughs> um, so thanks for having, thanks for coming on, Jazz. No worries. You can thank thanks me for having, having you. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Um, and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Uh, have a shit one. Check out my Patreon. It's going nuts. Join the Discord chat. It's, uh, we're getting a real good community going and the memes are on fire. All right. See you next Sunday uh, or a little bit earlier if you're a Patreon supporter. Have a shit one.